That's Bob. Bob is the kind of guy who, no matter what time he falls asleep, no matter how long he sleeps, or what he's doing throughout his whole day, he will always, always feel tired, unenergetic, and unmotivated to do anything or to tackle anything throughout his day. We don't want to be like Bob. This is not what we want to be. And then there's you. You actually take action of your health. You're looking in how to sleep better. You're looking how to eat better. And not only that, you're starting to exercise more than you ever did before. You do not feel sluggish throughout your day. You're on self-improvement. Gather round, boys. We've got another vid. See, this chronic tiredness is like a massive, massive problem. It's something that everyone is suffering with. No matter how much sleep you get or what time you wake up, you feel sluggish, tired, unenergetic to tackle the tasks of your day. Every single day. And you don't know why. I mean, this is a common problem throughout like the 70 year olds, like the elderly. You would expect this to be normal for them. Not for teens. Not for 18 to 25 year olds. Where 80% of 18 to 25 year olds feel this chronic tiredness. 80%, how mad is that? But the thing is like, it makes sense. When I'd walk through college and get off the train and like, you know, start walking on my way to get ready for lessons and stuff, I'd ask like people that I didn't really know well, but I'd ask to start conversation. Oh, how are you? Like a normal open sentence starter. And they'd always turn around and be like, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I was no different. I had the exact same response. Everyone was just played with this sleep deprivation. However, it wasn't until I started to look at three key points, my sleep, diet, and exercise, that I actually started to realize where the problem lies. See, we're gonna fix this, right? But the thing is, you probably are going through thinking like, oh wait, but my sleep, diet, and exercise, that's not a problem. Because I mean, that's what I first did. I was wondering, why am I tired? All right, I wanna make a video about this. Why am I tired? But my, my, my sleep, I get a good amount of sleep. I, I go to the gym, you know, I exercise. My diet is pretty good, you know, I, I'm, I'm eating like uh, like proper meals. Uh, yeah, my, my, my diet's not bad, yeah. So it's not bad, that's not why I'm tired. Must be iron deficiency, must be something like hereditary or that's really bad. <laughs> it must be something that's way, way worse, that's why I'm tired. That's what I would have wanted. That's what I was thinking, oh, it must be something worse, rather than just looking at like the simple things of that. Maybe my sleep isn't as good. Maybe my exercise isn't as good. And maybe my food isn't as good. Now, we're going to fix this. But not in the way that you think. So stick to the end because you might be pleasantly surprised. Now, the first one we're going to talk about is sleep. This is probably like the biggest one. First things first, stop misusing caffeine. Okay, how many... you? Okay, you might not drink caffeine, but like if you do, or like you drink tea, because that has caffeine in tea is no different <laughs> we brits drink tea <laughs> if you drink caffeine or like coffee people will like tell you that like oh coffee's in your system for about five to seven hours that's not true that's the half-life which is a metric that's used but that's why people think that like oh coffee is only in your system for five to seven hours no that's the half-life so if you drink coffee at 2 p.m half of the ca caffeine is still going to be in your system at 12 a.m. in midnight, when you're supposed to be in bed, snuggled up and asleep. Half the caffeine is still gonna be in your system. Thing is, you may not notice at first because you might not be like actively working, searching for things to do like, ah, caffeine makes me wanna work. No, no, no. You'll notice it because you can't sleep. You'll feel wide awake. You don't feel like doing anything. You just don't feel tired. That's the caffeine. So stop misusing caffeine, right? If drinking it like at 2 p.m., which isn't even that late, but it will be in your system until late. So what I did to fix this was no caffeine after 12 p.m., okay? Because that way, the caffeine will be out of your system latest 10 p.m. And I go to bed at around that time. So that works out for me. So that's why I chose like past 12, uh, past 12 p.m. Nah, past lunch, no caffeine, none of that in my system because it'll be in my system from this morning because I drink a lot of caffeine in the morning, like black coffee to get me into a flow state before I work, before I start work. So that's what I did. No caffeine past 12 p.m. There's also something called sleep efficiency. Now this is something that you need to take account of because say, what time do you go to bed, right? And be honest, like 
oh, I'm in bed at like 10 p.m. and I get up at 7 a.m. All right, probably a lot of people probably don't do that. Like probably people go to bed like two in the morning and they still get up at 7 a.m. because they got college or something. But say you go, say you go to bed at 10, 10 p.m., right? And you get up at 7 a.m. So you're in bed for about, wait a minute, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You're an Asian that can't do maths. <laughs> you're in bed for about nine hours, right? Oh, I got sleep for nine hours. No, 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 no. That's not, you've not actually been sleeping the whole time you've been in bed. And that's what sleep efficiency is. Now, a good healthy sleep efficiency is around 80%. So 80% of the time you're in bed, you're asleep. So nine hours in bed, you're asleep around seven hours. That's pretty good. However, that's a healthy sleep efficiency. Not many people have that. The average sleep efficiency is around 60 to 50% more in the 60% zone. So you're you're in bed for nine hours, but you're actually asleep for about five. That's bad. So first thing that you want to do here is just allow yourself more time to sleep, right? And the thing is, you probably aren't going to bed at 10 a.m. Uh, 10, 10 p.m., not 10 a.m. You're probably not going to bed at 10 p.m. You're probably going to bed like two in the morning because you're going to bed with your phone. And that's the next thing, blue light. Everyone knows that blue light is bad. Everyone knows that, oh, blue light. Oh, everyone knows this, but no one, I don't think anyone like knows why. The reason why blue light is bad because it messes up with your circadian rhythm. Now, your circadian rhythm is basically your internal clock. If you get up in the morning and your curtains are drawn and it's dark and there's no sun. So when you get up in the morning and it's dark and right before you sleep, you're surrounded by this harsh blue light everywhere. Your phone, your TV, your Xbox or whatever it is. If you're surrounded by this harsh blue light, your brain isn't going to think it's nighttime. That's why blue light is bad, because it makes your brain think that, oh, OK, it's daytime now. It messes up with your internal clock. So you aren't going to feel tired. That's why blue light makes you awake before you like asleep. So either get glasses or like just don't go on your phone. Don't sleep with your phone. If you want to actually sleep well, don't sleep with your phone. And another thing to sleeping well, like all of what I mentioned about is like stuff to do before you sleep, to actually sleep efficiently and sleep better, breathe through your nose. There is a 90% chance that you are not breathing through your nose and you're breathing through your mouth. And I don't blame you. It's because it's easy, right? It's easy to breathe through your mouth. I mean, I do it sometimes as well. It's easy to breathe through your mouth. But the thing is, your body isn't supposed to breathe through its mouth why you have a nose and you might be be like oh no but like i can't breathe through my mouth like my nose because my, my nose is blocked well get some tape just tape it on your mouth and or you can get like actual like mouth tape i just use regular tape not in a kinky way i just straight up go, tsh, boom. <laughs> and uh i don't use a lot i just a little bit on the lips just because that tiny weeny bit of mouth pressure is enough to switch my brain to be like oh okay you can't open your mouth now. We're going to clear your nose and breathe through your nose now. That tiny bit of pressure is enough. Even though if you could just open your mouth, it would come undone. So that tiny pressure is enough for you to start breathing through your nose, which trust me, after doing it myself, breathing through your nose throughout your sleep is so beneficial. Like you wake up unsure where you are, like that good of a sleep. Next thing that we're going to talk about is exercise. Now, there is one thing that I really want to focus on here what benefits the body benefits the mind bro that i'm not gonna lie someone should quote me on that that's like that's straight up like some zen like yin and yang stuff right there <laughs> and the thing is like going back to what i said at the beginning i thought that i had a good diet exercise and sleep i was going to the gym yeah i was like well, I'm, i exercise i'm going to the gym i was only going three or four times a week and it would only be like an hour session throughout a whole 12 hour day and that wasn't every single day. So I, my exercise wasn't as good as I thought. Yeah, I was doing more than the other person. I was doing more than Bob, but I wasn't really doing that much. So first thing I do is I go out. I walk every single day, at least 30 minutes at minimal. Thing is, you'll end up walking more, like walking around, just getting sunlight and fresh air into your system. Obviously, that's healthy, right? Sunlight. Yeah we love the sun so like obviously that's healthy so that's what i started doing and the thing is like as you as you're doing things like beneficial like physically your mind starts to seek out for the benefits mentally if you're on self-improvement and you're only doing the exercise and diet like focusing on that eventually your mind is going to start thinking okay how can we improve the mental 
your mind and body are like yin and yang they help improve each other if you're doing nothing with your body your mind's going to start adapting to that if you're being going out exercising every single day your mind is going to adapt to that and you're going to actually be tired when you fall asleep because you've you've actually done stuff with your day rather than sitting and do nothing now diet this is a pretty small topic because there's only one major thing that i can really say from like my own experience diet stop eating processed food just stop it just stop eating processed stuff it is so unbelievably bad for you the amount of stuff they put into processed foods like junk food just so you can get the food slightly quicker is that really worth it <laughs> like i would always buy like these sort of like russell brand pre-made burgers which you just put in the microwave you can buy from like sainsbury's or like anything right i'd buy them you put in the microwave for one minute and i'd have that for like dinner lunch breakfast after eating that i'd be like not energized like after eating food which is supposed to energize you and fill you up i wouldn't be like that i'd be like oh i've just eaten this junk food that's literally processed and dog food right and it's not and it's surprisingly not made me energetic i wonder why yeah obviously obviously it's not helped you stop eating processed foods the best thing you can do right now cook your own meals and cook your own meals with single ingredient stuff stuff that doesn't have an ingredients list because it can't because it's just one thing so like carrots just buy carrots it doesn't have an ingredients list it's a carrot or like chicken or like broccoli or like potatoes again potatoes are so good potatoes are so good for you you have no idea how amazing they are I love spuds. And the thing is, you might like, unless you like live by yourself and you can actually cook your own meals, you might be with parents, you might be a teenager who, like that's the majority of people who watch my videos, who are like closer to my age, like teens, like 18s to in your 20s. Maybe you're with your parents and you can't actually cook your own meals. Just ask your parents like, okay, can we just buy single ingredient stuff? I'll cook, okay? I will cook you food. I will cook me food. I really want to start eating healthier. And not eating processed foods and i don't think that your parents are going to turn around and be like no you're eating mcdonald's i don't goddamn care if you're offering to cook and the thing is you need all of these you need all of these you can't do one or two and think that you'll be fine oh i i, I want to sleep well i want to exercise but like the diet i like eating junk food i like all that you can't do that and there is a reason why because if you are missing any one of these the other two are going to fall apart as well. You need these three to hold together. If you're exercising and sleeping well, then that's good. But if you aren't eating well, you're eating processed food, you're eating junk food, you aren't getting the right nutrients, you aren't feeding your body. If you're exercising using your body more, and you're not eating to keep up with that, eventually you'll still feel sluggish, tired. You're going to still feel this chronic tiredness, this sleep debt that you're in. You're still going to feel it. If you sleep well and have a really good diet, that's great and all, but you aren't using that energy, right? You're storing up on good nutrients and you're getting good sleep, but you're not using that energy anywhere. It's like if you stay inside in your bed all day, when you're at the end of the day, you feel tired still. And there's 100% people who are going to relate to that because a lot of people do that. They just stay in their room all days and they're like, oh, why am I tired even though I've not done anything today? Oh, that must, that's why you're tired. Your body hasn't expended that energy anywhere so you're just gonna get sleepy your mind adapts to how what your body is doing you need all of these three to actually be able to pay off this sleep debt that you're in granted it's a big debt <laughs> this isn't gonna go away in one night it's gonna take a little while all right two weeks maybe a month you haven't been sleeping well for a long time you need to start paying off that debt and that is by looking in your sleep exercise and diet by the end of 2024, I'm going to have our, this channel to 100,000 subscribers so we can have a community. So not only I will help you, this community can help you. So that these problems that you have, you can overcome. If you're on self-improvement, stay consistent. Do the best you can. Love you, bro. Mwah. Obviously, no homo. Just to put that out there. By the way, this 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 whole like jacket, like sh shank jacket sort of thing makes me look like a lumberjack. I'm buying an axe, just go...